Today I want to show you how I unlock my home with NFC cards, which are your hotel keys that you get when you stay in a hotel. Uh, this also works with magic bands, it works with regular NFC tags, and it works with um, air tags. So it works with anything that has NFC, at least anything that I've tried so far. The system really just lets you adopt more or less any NFC uh, from my experience. And it's very, very versatile. So if you've ever used Home Assistant, and if you read this title of this video and you're here because you saw Home Assistant, then you already know the power of Home Assistant. Home Assistant is essentially an open source home automation platform that ties in with almost everything. Not everything, for sure, but almost everything. And so obviously, if you can sense the NFC tag being read at your doorbell, at your door, you can then trigger things like unlock your door, disarm your alarm, open the garage door, or maybe you want to have two NFC tags, one for when you leave and one for when you come home. So when you leave, you swipe one, it arms the alarm, shuts the door, locks the door, shuts the lights off, turns off the heat, that sort of thing. So uh, to do this, you're going to need, obviously, Home Assistant. Um, and, I, and by the way, we don't cut the door jam in this experiment, in this, in this uh, method. We use a Z-Wave door lock. So it, I actually have one here. This is a Yale Z-Wave door lock that I'll be using for this demonstration, although the one that's installed on my door, that I'm in my, my actual door, is a um, quick set lock. Hope that was in frame. And you're going to need a Z-Wave stick of some kind, a USB stick as part of your home assistant. I downgraded to the Z-Stick Gen 5. I might do a video on why I did that. I used to have an 800 series. I downgraded to the 500 series, and my locks work much better. Um, I know some of you probably are familiar with the problems with that if you're looking at, uh, if you have Z-Wave. You're going to need a Unify Protect G4 Pro doorbell. Now these things can be pricey unless they're on sale. These I picked up for $179. There was a holiday special. Um, this is a pretty nice doorbell by itself. And I don't think most people realize it had NFC capability because it wasn't turned on initially. So this doorbell, uh, has two cameras, so you have the camera that faces your, your visitor on the front, and then you have the camera that watches for packages on the bottom. It's pretty big, it's a beefy doorbell, it's a nice size, and then you have your button in the center, but the button, uh, and also down here there's actually a fingerprint um, reader, which works, but if it's raining and it's wet, it's, it's not going to work, so NFC is, is going to be more reliable in that scenario. But the button also has an NFC reader in it, so you'll essentially just hold up your card, and that will unlock the door and let you in. So in order to use the um, Unify Protect platform, you're going to need, at minimum, a Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, which is this guy right here. Although I'd recommend if you're going to be getting into the Unify Protect platform, you might as well just get the UDM Pro. Uh, we can talk about that in the comments, but my opinion is if you're going to get it, you might as well just go all the way. So. But this will work. So uh, I should just go over that quickly. If you have Unify Protect already, you, you know this, but Unify Protect records all of your videos locally inside your home or business on a hard drive. So this has a hard drive in it. Um, and any one of their Unify Protect capable devices will do that. The drive is here. Um, but like I said, this is just not going to have the horsepower that you're ultimately going to probably want because once you get one Unify Protect device, you're probably going to want a whole lot more. All right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna wire up this doorbell here on the bench. Um, I have a handy dandy transformer here. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up and we'll get started. So I adopted the doorbell um, in the Unify Protect app, which is something that you're going to do when you first get the doorbell. Uh, and I'm not gonna go through the steps of that because it's going to vary today versus when you buy your doorbell. The process is pretty simple. You're going to wire it up, stand next to it with your Unify Protect app open on your phone and it's going to uh, pop up on your screen and say, add a device. It's gonna notice it's there. It's gonna say, would you, would you wanna add this? You're gonna say yes, you're gonna add it, and then it's gonna update. And what you're gonna notice is before it updates, uh, you don't have an option to add NFC cards to this doorbell. That's because this was a very new uh, software update that allowed this. So depending on when you purchase your doorbell, odds are you're not gonna have that option. So I adopted it. The first time I adopted one of these, it took 10 or 15 minutes to do the update. I think there's a little battery maybe that needs to charge inside the doorbell before it will actually do the update because uh, it doesn't want to break itself. But as you can see, it's updating now. Uh, this 
updated pretty quickly. I don't know if that's gonna be the complete update that I need, so I'm gonna sit back, have some coffee. It says on my screen, seven minutes remaining. We'll wait seven minutes, or I'll wait seven minutes, and then we'll move forward. The camera update is complete, and it'll show in the app camera updating for a while, and eventually it will no longer show that the camera's updating, and at that point it's finished. If I hold an NFC card up, you see nothing happens. That's because we haven't added any NFC cards yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and here, in the app, I'm gonna add an NFC card. You see it says register the card by holding it above the screen for five seconds. So I'll go ahead and register this Bonvoy Elite card, and it acknowledges it. Now on my phone, it's asking me which user do I want to add this to, so I will just add this to my friend Mike and hit save. And now, whenever I swipe this card, we're going to see it recognizes it as Mike Genevieve. So you can see the card is now registered to Mike's account. Now the rest of this, we're actually going to do on a uh, desktop environment. I don't know that you can do the alarm manager on the mobile uh, device. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now I just wanna show you any NFC card that you, or any NFC device that you scan, if it rejects it, you can see no permission. This magic band was rejected, but if it rejects it, that means it can be programmed as well. It means it recognizes it. So you can see every one of these cards is being recognized or just not programmed in. So if you have an NFC card, you're not sure if it will work, you can go ahead and try it out. Now Mia gets a kick out of this. Now this card actually is programmed on a different lock, um, but it's not registered for this lock, so that's why it's rejecting it. But you can see all of these work. Like I said, I haven't come across an NFC device yet that doesn't, even the AirTags uh, work. Like I said, let me go ahead and show you the next step in, on, you know, on desktop, and we'll walk through that. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make the connection between Unify Protect and the actual scan, when you scan your card, and Home Assistant. Now, unfortunately, there is no uh, integration currently in Home Assistant that would allow you to adopt the Unify Protect system and get these NFC scans. You can adopt your Unify Protect system, and you can use things like vehicle detections, animal detections, I believe package detection may even be in there, but you cannot detect an NFC scan yet using the integration, but there is a way to do it. We're gonna be using something called webhooks. Webhooks are basically a universal way for multiple applications to communicate with one another. It's a very simple concept. You create a URL in one application, and when the other application accesses that URL, it causes an, an action to occur in the first application. So in this case, Protect is just going to visit the URL. Uh, that's gonna be the action that occurs when you scan the NFC card, and then we're gonna trigger an automation in Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step here is we have to set up an automation in Home Assistant to be triggered by these scans. So we're just gonna go into settings in, in Home Assistant. We're gonna to go to automations and scenes. We're going to go ahead and create an automation, create new automation, and add a trigger. For this, we're going to go with other triggers, and the trigger we're going to use is going to be a webhook. Now, every webhook gets a unique ID, and this unique ID is going to be part of the URL, as you'll see here in a minute. We're gonna give it a short name for now. We're just gonna call it door scan 1234. And then we have to create an action that we want to occur when this automation is fired. And the action that we want here is we're going to unlock a lock. So we're gonna select lock, unlock, choose the device. And in my system, the Yale lock that's sitting on the desk here is just called Yale lock in my system. So Yale door lock in my system. So there you go, Yale door lock is going to unlock. And then you can give it any name you want. We'll just give this um, Mike door scan because this is Mike's card that we're programming for this example. So you can have every one of these cards do something different. You could have one for, say, if you have somebody who comes and manages your pool for you and they need access to your shed or your garage. You can give them a key that only unlocks the garage door but maybe doesn't you know, disarm the alarm. Or maybe it turns on the yard lights if he comes after hours, I don't know. So you can issue these keys to whoever wants them. Now I know you could be thinking, well, it's kind of counterintuitive to have these NFC keys if you have a pin code on your door lock. That's true, but not everybody wants to give out their pin code for their door because it's too easy to share. And if that number gets out, then you have to change the code. Or if you wanna remove a user, you have to change the code and then everybody needs the new code. So there's a lot of usefulness in having cards instead of pin numbers to get into a door lock. Uh, it's a lot less management. You just add the card, issue the card. If the person no longer needs access, shut it off. You can create a schedule in Home Assistant that says these cards only work certain times of day, certain days of the week, whatever it is that you want. So here we go. Mike door scan, we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, to test this, we're just gonna go up here and we're, oh, actually, I forgot one very important thing. 
When you create your webhook, make sure you go into the little cog here and set this to get. Make sure that the get method is enabled, otherwise this will fail when you go to put it in Unify Protect. So go ahead and hit save here. There's a good reason for that. We can talk about it in the comments if you want more information about why. All right, so now we've created our webhook. And the way you trigger a webhook or you call a webhook is you literally just put in the URL of that webhook. And the way these are formatted in Home Assistant is it's IP address, port, API, webhook, door scan. So slash API, slash webhook, slash door scan, as you see on the screen here. And this is door scan 1234 was the name of this webhook. So we're just going to go ahead and test it. I'm going to hit return here and we're going to watch the door lock. And there you go, the door lock just unlocked. That was pretty quick. Very little delay there. And this door lock is currently programmed to relock itself after 30 seconds. That's an, a feature of the Yale lock. Some of these locks have this feature, others do not. I currently have Yale, Quick Set, and Schlage, or Schlage, Schlage, however you say it, in my system today. I really don't have a preference of one over the other. Uh, I really like the Schlage locks. I've had them for maybe 10 years. Uh, and I really feel like Z-Wave is underrated and it's a super important protocol because it's low power, works for these door locks. You don't need, there it goes, it locked itself. You don't need to cut your door jam to do this type of thing. All right, so now that we know it works, let's head over to Unify Protect here. And we're in the alarm manager, which is in the bottom left corner. This is relatively new at the time of making this video. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna create an alarm. And the alarm is going to be triggered by activity. And the activity is NFC card scan. And in this case, we're going to trigger on Mike Genovese's card because that's what we're demonstrating here today. And you can see, now that I selected that, I only have two potential uh, devices on my network that have NFC readers in them. And one of them is called G4 Doorbell Pro. That's the one that's sitting on the workbench here today. And what we want our action to be for this alarm is we want to call a webhook and we want it to be a custom webhook. And the URL for that webhook is going to be, well, it's not currently in my clipboard. Let me go grab it. It's the same URL we just tested, which is the IP address, the port, slash API, slash webhook, slash door scan, 1234. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in here. And now we're going to look at the advanced settings. We're not going to change them, but you can see that the method here is get, and that's why it was important that we selected get over in Home Assistant. Otherwise, this would fail because it would be waiting for uh, some additional information in the header that's not there. Okay. So we can set it to ignore repeated actions. Uh, I don't know how long of a delay that is, so we're just not gonna do that for now. And we're gonna go ahead and hit create. We're gonna give it a name. We'll call this NFC Mike. Again, the name is not important here. It's just for your own reference. Go ahead and hit create and let's test it. So we already know we programmed this hotel key to be Mike's key for this system. So if we go ahead and swipe it, we should get the confirmation tone when, you know, when it agrees that the key is his, it should show his name. It should then call the webhook over in Home Assistant, which would then trigger this lock. So let's try it. And there you go. It wasn't a ridiculously long delay. Maybe it was only two seconds. I don't know. I'd have to go back and rewind. That's partly because this lock was already recently awake. So when a Z-Wave device goes into what seems to be a deeper sleep, sometimes there's a two to three second additional delay. And so the way I got around that is in my driveway, because the Unify Protect integration in Home Assistant lets you trigger automations based on events such as vehicles and humans being detected in the area, lock just locked itself on its own. Uh, if a human is detected by the doorbell in the driveway, it automatically will ping the lock, which wakes it up. It doesn't actually unlock the lock, it just pings it. That way, by the time you get there with your NFC card, the lock is already sort of awake in the background and ready for that quick response. So you can see how quick of a response that was. That's pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. And like I said, you can do this with just about any NFC device. Um, this one's not programmed in the system. Um, I have a drawer with maybe a hundred NFC device, or I shouldn't say device, but cards, tags, labels. I have a drawer or a bin with about a hundred different, you know, tags, NFC tags. And I haven't come across one that doesn't work yet, although I'm sure there's some version. Now, keep in mind, NFC is not the same as Wigan 26-bit or 37-bit, which is the uh, HID protocol that was originally what was being used for door locks and still is in a lot of places today. That's, that's not NFC, not, not by the true definition. So those will not work with this system, but it's pretty cool. And this is the only way that I could come up with 
that was really just off-the-shelf products. I mean, I'm going to make my own you know, NFC reader that's just an NFC reader that's PoE powered. Uh, very, very small, doesn't require the $179 doorbell, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, doesn't have the display on it and all that, doesn't double as a camera either, but it's useful. It has a usefulness to it. Say you want it as my lab door here, I don't need a camera there. I can do this with a, maybe, maybe it will ultimately cost me $30 in parts to make it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you found this useful. I have a lot of advanced things I've done in Home Assistant that maybe I'll share here if you guys find this type of video useful. Let me know and let's chat in the comments and see how you would use this tool. See you next time.